Just a few years ago, I showed off this $10 Blaupunk car stereo that was available at Walmart. You guys seem to like it. We had about three quarters of a million views on that video. What about today? Walmart has a dual electronics car stereo head unit with four speakers for $35. Unfortunately, that one's always out of stock, so we'll get it without the speakers for $25. Let's take a look. And here we have it. The dual AM FM digital car stereo, the model XD18 BT. Whoa. Includes features such as Bluetooth, 200 watts, USB and 3.5 aux inputs, voice activated buttons, smart app control, and all kind of other goodies here as shown on the side. It does have an RCA preamp output, four EQ presets, tone control, 1.3 inch slim depth, yeah boy, 30 station presets, 18 FM, 12 AM for your talk radio needs. Let's open up the package and find out what you get. First off, you get this quick start guide, which is not truly an owner's manual. It's just literally a quick start guide, which folds out into about five different pieces like an old newspaper. We don't like that kind. Also, we have the little keys that come with it. These are not Allen's keys. These are keys for removing the radio from the dash once you have it installed. And of course, it comes with a wiring harness so that you can power it up. It does have a 10 amp fuse in there does have the constant power, the ground, and the switch. Also, all the speaker leads, and it does have a remote output for turning on an external amplifier as well. Of course, the dual electronics head unit is a star of the show, so let's take it out so we can take a closer look. Oh, we got some silica gel. Do not eat. And taking a closer look here of the head unit, it does remind me a lot of the Blaupunk model we tested a couple years ago. And yeah, there's just not a whole lot going on here. Very slim design. These things can fit virtually anywhere, but it does have the den style width and height, so it does fit into a standard car stereo mount from back in the day. Honestly, it's not really standard anymore. But as far as dimensions go, seven inches by two inches by 1.3 inches and a millimeter equivalent to there as well. Overall, head unit's very basic. Does have very few buttons here on the front. Most of them are at the bottom. And they're really hard to see, but it does have a rotary volume control, which we appreciate. Can't stand push button volumes. Once we turn the unit on, it welcomes you. In this case, since it's the first time it's turned on, it starts on FM 87.5. We're touching the source button here to switch through the different available sources of the head unit. Again, showing the FM here, you do have the option for 18 FM presets. There's six per uh, FM1, FM2, FM3, and there's 12 on the AM side. I don't know if anybody who listens to AM radio anymore, but uh, you have 12 presets for those. Of course, if you download the app, the dual iPlug P2 Smart App Remote is what it's called. It gives you all the functions pretty much of the head unit in the app, which actually is pretty cool. I just can't see using this when you're driving because there's so much going on here. It would be really confusing to try to use this, but it does give you the option to use the radio part here and you can actually get through all of your different presets. You can set your presets, you can do the volume, you can scan through, you can do auto store, all kind of stuff. Then you can switch to the USB. We have a USB drive in here. You can play, pause, skip tracks. Again, volume control. You have access to the EQ as well. Um, all kind of features that you would ever want. I think this will pretty be pretty neat if you use it in a different setting, like if you use it in a boat or maybe in a garage or something where you didn't have to Look at the head unit the whole time. You could just use your phone. Also show here that if you make changes on the head unit itself, it displays those changes on the app. In addition, you have access to the EQ functions. And again, it's easier to do it here on the app than it is to do it on the radio itself. But you're switching through flat, pop, classic, and rock. And I would not recommend using any of these because they are horrible but there is bass sliders, treble sliders, balance, and fader there as well, and a loudness option at the bottom. Also like the way the app shows the song title when you're on Bluetooth, it does not show up on the front display of the head unit, so that's nice. Well, speaking of that, I didn't really show you how to get this thing connected via Bluetooth, so let me show you that. When you have the head unit powered up, you'll notice the BT light flashing continuously because it's always looking for a connection so then when you go to your phone and just make sure your Bluetooth is enabled on your phone, you'll see dual media player. Just touch it there and it's going to ask you for a code most likely. According to the manual, it's 1234. They say if that doesn't work, try 0000. But 1234 worked for me. Touch the pair. 
Left the apple there. Did not touch the apple, touch the pear. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! Then we have a connection here for the dual media player. Only takes it about 10 seconds or so total. Show that it's connected and we're good to go. Moving on to the USB connection. According to the manual, it supports MP3s on a USB drive, but I did put FLAC and WAVE and some other formats as well. I was happy to report that it does support FLAC, did not support WAVE, but here I'm just kind of going through also the different adjustments that are available via the volume control which you push that in to select different options. Same thing that I showed you already using the app. Again, if I wasn't in the car, if I had this mounted somewhere else, I'd probably just use the app. It's much easier to get through all the different settings. According to Dual, this has a CEA 2006 power standard spec of 14 watts per channel at four ohms. So we're gonna try that using the amplifier dyno and see what we can come up with. First off, we're gonna do the auxiliary input. We're gonna use the output from the Pioneer ADPRS head unit, use the one kilohertz amp dyno test track, which is track number nine on the disc. Let's try it certified first to 1% distortion. And yeah, we do get that number. We get about 16 watts per channel at 14.36 one kilohertz. What about uncertified? What, what about to the clipping point? Do we get any more power? Let's run the test here and see. Ah, just slightly a little bit more, 17 and 16, 14.34. Next up, we'll try the dynamic test. See if we get any more power dynamically. And nope, get about exactly the same, actually. 17 and 16, 14.38. Now we're going to try the USB drive with the same exact track on it, the 1 kilohertz amp dyno test track. And we noticed something very interesting and also kind of concerning that when we tried this hooked up to the dyno, the amp dyno counted very slow. And by the time it got to the end of the 15 seconds, it had not completed the amplifier test. You can see it stopped at 10 watts. So you actually get more when you use the auxiliary input. So that made us think, what about Bluetooth? Can we get more power using Bluetooth? So we connected the head unit to the iPhone, ran the same track nine, one kilohertz sweep track from the amp dyno test tracks. And let's see what we get here, certified at four ohms. And once again, came up shy. We only get nine watts per channel, 14.37. So that's unfortunate. We're gonna try it at two ohms. This is not rated for two ohms, it's four or eight ohm operation, but we figured we tried anyway. And you can see we got close to 20 watts per channel at 14. Point three. Just to note, we were only using two channels of the amplifier, we weren't using all four, so that could have uh, given us just a little bit more power here on the two available channels. So again, uncertified 20 and 18 at 14.3. Then we'll try the dynamic test. Again, one kilohertz burst track here. A little bit over 20, about 21 watts per channel at 14.3, so not too bad overall for the built-in amp. Next up, for those curious about the RCA output, we're gonna test the voltage and the total harmonic distortion of that output. So here we have the DD1 test track at one kilohertz. We have the Panasonic THD meter. And once we get to volume 35, we tried 36 and went back to 35 and that seemed to be the cleanest volume. 2.2 volts RMS of output at about 0.12% distortion. So that's not too bad because it's only rated to be, I think, 1.3 volts of output. So you get a little bit more than that. Next up, let's hook up the ELAC bookshelf speakers to find out how this $25 head unit sounds over some sound quality speakers. The biggest thing I noticed here was not the fidelity, it actually sounded okay, 
but it did not have the output I normally expect from most amplifiers I test with these speakers, so that should be noted. The Savard 6.5 inch Hi-Q subwoofer has an RMS power handle at 350 watts, sports a 2 inch voice coil, 11 millimeter one way X Max, 22 millimeter overall, 80 ounce Y35 magnet, long strand Kevlar cone for added strength, cast aluminum basket, as well as integrated 12 gauge spring loaded terminals. Overall, these are great subwoofers. I've used them for several years. Thanks to Savard for sponsoring this video. If you want to check these out, make sure you check links in the video description. Use code WOW7 for 7% off these or other Savard subwoofers. Now this is always the fun part for me. Let's find out what's inside this $25 Bluetooth head unit. Here we can see there's not a whole lot going on here. Not many separate components. Literally it's the motherboard, it's the front, and then it's the back, which is also the heat sink. And there's a few buttons and a screw, a couple little mounting things there on the right. That's literally all there is. And as far as the head unit itself goes, there's just a few chips on here, some different controllers. There's the amplifier chip there. We'll show a different uh, version of the picture here so you can see everything all together. There's a capacitor there on the right. There's some really small capacitors there on there as well. And here we have the LCD display chip, the Holtec HT1621B. And we also have the ACDX-C14B5H, that's the USB controller. And we see a 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitor there. It looks big here, but this is a macro shot, really small. Check out all the traces here going from the amplifier chip over to the Molex plug. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I couldn't find on the bottom what this amp chip was, but then the light bulb went off in a big dummy's head and noticed silk screening here on the circuit board YD 7389, which is a generic version of the TDA 7389 integrated amplifier chip. Four channels, four by 45 watts, max four by 28 watts at 10% distortion. That's what the chip can handle. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this $25 head unit from Walmart. First up, low cost obviously, rotary volume control, I hate the push button stuff, AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB, and auxiliary. Also via USB, you can play FLAC and MP3 files. I'm confident all the audio files will be going and picking these up now. Also has RCA outputs, an app control, and a slim mounting depth. As far as things to consider, it has low gain for Bluetooth and USB. You won't reach full output. Don't expect long life at 25 bucks. I know the other unit at $10 did not last long for a lot of people. The buttons are hard to see. Display is not great because it doesn't have a lot of characters. This is available exclusively at Walmart, so don't go look on Amazon. So overall, there we have the head unit, the $25 Walmart special Bluetooth car stereo head unit. People might ask me, would you recommend this? Well. If you have an older car you're trying to get rid of that has a den style head unit, you can get one of these, sell the car. Hey, it has Bluetooth. I wouldn't expect this thing to last very long. It's just not the build quality is not there. And we know the Blau Punk model didn't last very long at all. But I do appreciate you guys watching as always. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Now, if you'd like to use this in a home environment plugged into the wall, you can see this $20 12 volt 10 amp power supply. I'll leave a link in the video description. You can use something like this to power this head unit if you want to use it outside of a vehicle. And you can see the unique thing about this is it comes with the adapter which breaks out the positive and negative on the end of the plug. So you can use this to plug in the head unit and keep it on at all times. So very cool for 20 extra bucks.